Lord, everybody. I pray you're doing great. It's been an interesting several weeks. We've just gotten a stay-at-home order from our governor in Larimer County. And so I'm going to ask you, if you could, really respect these guidelines. You know, the Bible says the powers that be are ordained to the Lord, and we want to respect those guidelines. We want to be part of the help and, and blessing to our county and community. You're not a curse. So I pray that you will follow these guidelines and respect. I've been asking the Lord to give me a word for this time. I've been asking the Lord to keep us through this time. I've been asking the Lord for continued divine health and protection from this coronavirus. And I'm asking the Lord to keep you today. Now, it looks like this stay-at-home order could remain in place through April 17th, slamming Resurrection Sunday celebration. Now, if that happens... Our first Sunday back uh, in the building will be a celebration of our risen Lord and crawling out of quarantine. Please know that we're praying for you and we're asking the Lord to help you. And if you need to, you can private message me. You can reach out. I'll address your questions, etc. And if you need counseling, whatever, if you want to talk and you want to video chat, we could use Google Hangouts or FaceTime. But I'm here for you the best I can. Uh, Also, thank you so much for remembering your giving during this time. And how to give is on how to give online is right below at the bottom of your screen right now. But if you would just take a minute and share this live feed on your page or start a watch party, we'd sure appreciate it. We just want the Lord to use this medium and. It's a great way to share this, what God's doing at Abundant Life, but also open up people to God's Word and the truth of God's Word and how it can save them. Amen. Not just for eternity, but even in this life, how the Lord will make a difference in their life. Would you pray with me? Let's just really ask the Lord to move. Oh, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we just come before you, Lord. We're asking you, Lord, in Jesus' name to pour out your Spirit. Heavenly Father, we need you. Lord Jesus, we pour out our hearts before you. We're asking you, Lord, for mercy and grace. We're asking you, Lord, for supernatural touch. And Lord Jesus, we we need you, Lord. And there's a lot of folks that are scared right now. They're, They're wondering what's happening. We've never gone through anything like this in the United States before. And it's it's shaking us to our core. Lord, you told us the things that can be shaken will be shaken and the things that can't be shaken will remain. And we're asking you, Lord, let our faith, though it's being shaken right now, let it stand the test of time. Let it stand through this, Lord, and help us not to be overcome with fear, but help us, Lord Jesus, to overcome fear, Lord, with faith and help us to stand firm in the name of Jesus. God, help us not to be critical of one another during this time. So many folks are are looking at one another saying, why are they not doing this? And why is this person not doing that? But help us to believe the best in one another that we could really be the body of Christ, Lord. Because we really don't need to barbecue each other, Lord. We need each other more now than ever before. So in Jesus' name, I pray for divine strength, divine health. I pray, Lord Jesus, for salvation, God. I pray for good reports on medical exams, Lord. I pray for folks to be strengthened in the Holy Ghost today. I pray for those that, were, that have gotten hurt this week, Lord, that you would heal them, Lord. I pray for those that are struggling with a cold or a virus of some sort, Lord, and they're afraid they've got corona, Lord. And I pray in Jesus' name, Lord, that they'll come through this quickly and that they won't let their minds run away with them, Lord, that we will trust that you're with us. And we'll be wise. Be with us today and let this Bible study, Lord, let it just fill these people with hope because we're people of covenant, Lord. We're in a covenant relationship with you. And I'm trusting, oh, Lord, that you're going to guide us in this. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for tuning in today and taking time out of your day to be with us here. I, I'm so humbled that you are a part of Abundant Life and that you take time to listen to a servant of God like me. I'm a simple man, but I've come to know some things about the Lord, and I'd love to share some of those things with you. I, uh, 
was thinking to myself how different our relationship to God is from that of the Old Testament believers in Israel. In Sinai, the people trembled at God's presence. They were afraid of him in Exodus 19, verse 16. On top of that, Israel had to follow a pattern throughout their relationship with God, requiring them to go through human priests. And these guys stood as mediators between them and God. And, and you know what? You may want to take some notes tonight. If you have a pen and paper, maybe open up your spiral notebook, because I believe some things that you could learn here tonight that's going to help you through this crisis. See, it's important to remember that for thousands of years, God's people have come to know him through the law of Moses. Access to the divine was determined and very difficult. It, if not handled with the utmost care, it could be deadly. See, the Holy of Holies was access denied. I mean, there's only one guy allowed to go in once a year, and that only with special offerings and sacrifices. And this is a very, very critical thing to happen. The Bible says the law was given, though, so we would know we are sinners. That's why the law was given. He's showing man, as he's given these covenants to man, he's showing them how much they need him. And what sin is, what right and wrong is. But it took time for man to understand that about himself. And once right and wrong was established in man's hearts, a better covenant could be loosed. All these paths, you know, to knowing God were made possible through God's progressive promises through covenants. And I want to talk to you about covenants today. And he re released progressive covenants. They were always being altered slowly. And I'm going to talk to you about these covenants. And that's not uh, the HOA that you're living in or, uh, you know, talking about the setback allowances in your neighborhood. I'm talking about covenant agreements that God made with his people. So these frail, unholy people, just like you and me, could have a relationship with a holy, righteous, and divine God. He's all-powerful, and He's holy. He's perfect in every way. And here we are. And with this revelation of how wrong we are, how off we are, amen, now we are actually in a place where we can have a progressive covenant. We, we, we're understanding some things about ourselves. That's the first thing we have to know about ourselves is that we're sinners, and once we understand that about ourselves, then we can step into covenant with him. And it was the same thing in the Old Testament. And it took Israel a long time to really understand this. And th these were conditional covenants. And they have a guarantee, right, that God was going to do something. And he's going to do his part when they do their part. But there were seven main covenants in the Bible, and three of them... Uh, he made with Israel as a nation. And these are called unconditional covenants because they weren't dependent on Israel's obedience. Now, the word covenant in the Hebrew is berit. In the Greek, it's dyneth, dyaneth. And it means an agreement, uh, an arrangement. See, God arranged for folks that desire a relationship with him a way to have that relationship. So that's what a covenant is. It's, it's a way not to get uh, fried <laughs> when you step into the presence of God. It, it's a place that God built for us that we can step out and, and worship him and enjoy his presence. So let me talk a little bit about the unconditional covenants in the Bible. Uh, there's Abrahamic covenant. And this is recorded in Genesis 12. Genesis 6, Genesis 13. And God promises Abraham that he's going to make his descendants great. He's going to give him an awesome name in history, that he would be the father of many nations. And God even shared the boundaries of the land given to Abraham for his natural descendants forever. And this all started in, and it's so powerful, this story, uh, and some of you that have heard me teach on the blood path will know where I'm going. But the blood path is a powerful covenant that God made with Abraham. 
See, God said, Abraham, I want you to go out into this field and I want you to find this ravine. I want you to take an oxen and I want you to take a goat and I want you to take a lamb and I want you to take a a turtle dove and I want you to split them down the middle and and I want their blood to mix in the middle of that ravine and blend together. And then you're going to walk through that ravine. You're going to walk through that blood and back through and then we'll be in covenant together. Well, the Bible says at midnight, Abraham a horror came over him. He was scared to death because what that covenant meant was whatever we've done to these animals will be done to me if I come short of my part of the covenant. God is so good. Abraham's just shaken. And the Bible says at midnight, a, a beautiful orb of light went through both sides of that offering and all that blood path and the light went through one side and then back up the other and Abraham just rejoiced because God was telling Abraham listen if I come short of the covenant or you come short of the covenant I'm going to pay the price isn't God good amen that was such a beautiful covenant that God gave Abraham and that's amen he kept the deal didn't he at Calvary he paid the price Praise God. Then there was the Palestinian covenant. Deuteronomy chapter 30 talks about that. And it signifies the land covenant that was spoken about in the Abrahamic covenant. And the people disobeyed God and they were scattered. Then verse 5 shares in Deuteronomy 30 that God restored the nation together and again prosper them. And God kept his covenant. Had nothing to do with them being faithful. It was just God. Then the Davidic covenant, you can read about this covenant in 2 Samuel 7, 8 through 6. And it strengthens this section of the Abrahamic covenant. But this time, it's the seed portion. See, God promises David that his seed will have a physical line of descendants and that they would last forever. And there's, a, there's coming a day, amen, that Jesus... The descendant of David will serve as king. And this, I could go into the book of Revelation and go into end times preaching, but I'm not going to. We're just talking about covenants right now. But there's so much fulfillment there. It's so awesome. And then there's the Noah, Noah covenant. That's about Noah. This covenant is found in Genesis 9. And God promised to never flood the earth again and destroy life. And a rainbow was given as a sign of the covenant. So every time you see a rainbow in the sky, it was a reminder that God's not going to destroy the earth with water again. But many of the covenants in the Bible were conditional. Conditional covenants in the Bible, number one was the Adamic covenant. And there's two parts to that covenant. The Edenic covenant, where the Garden of Eden is involved. That's Genesis 1, uh, Genesis 2. You can read about that. And then the Adamic covenant in Genesis 3.15. The first part shares man's responsibility towards creation and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The second part includes curses for sin of Adam and Eve. And it also includes God's provision for that sin. Then there's the Mosaic covenant. And this conditional covenant is found in Deuteronomy and Exodus, and it includes 10 commandments from Exodus 20 and the rest of the commands of the law. The history of the Old Testament is so powerful and how Israel obeyed the law or they failed obeying it. And then there's the prophecy. And this is the one where we are all included, the prophecy of a new covenant. This covenant was prophesied about in Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 31 through 34. Powerful scripture. And it was first made with Israel and then all of mankind. See, it's God's promise to forgive sin through the Messiah. Both Jews and Gentiles can be free from the penalty of the law. If we repent, that's the beauty of this. If we repent and we're born again and we, we're baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus and we accept that salvation through obedient faith, anything can happen. But the beautiful thing is God promises to redeem us. And this is where we are today. We're in this new covenant. 
And I believe that Isaiah 43, 18 through 19 is talking about this new covenant that is to come. In verse 18 of Isaiah 43, he said, Remember ye not the former things. Oh, thank God. Just take a deep breath. Some of you need to forget some stuff. Some of you need to just let the past go in the name of Jesus. Neither consider the things of old. Behold, I love that word, behold, I do a new thing. That's a declarative word spoken to God's people. Behold, I will do a new thing. Behold, look here is what he's saying. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. See, he spoke a faith path, just like he had that blood path with Abraham. He spoke a faith path, the same thing, out of their 70-year captivity into a liberation of redemption. See, God was calling his people out of the old and into the new. He's calling things that were not as though they had already happened. As far as God was concerned, it was already a done deal. When you get saved, you become positionally what God starts making you in real time. And that's something I really want you to see. You've got to accept that by faith. Amen. That I am in a covenant with Jesus Christ and I may not be everything I'm supposed to be right now, but God promises by his covenant with me to make me a new creature. And I'm going to get to that here in a little bit. In fact, I love this scripture in Isaiah 43 so much. In the same breath, God was announcing hope for humanity, the grace of the gospel to come. He says in the 15th verse, I am the Lord, your holy one. You see how he personalizes it? It's really powerful in the Hebrew. Your holy one, the creator of Israel, your king. That's who I am, he's saying. That's who I am to you. Thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea. Remember when I took you through the Red Sea, he says, remember that. That's me. I am your king. I am looking out for you. Now drop down a few verses. Do not remember the former things. Don't be tied up by that past covenant. Trust me in the new one that is to come. Nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Won't you praise God for that right now? I know we're going through some dry times. Today, I believe the Lord would say to his people, behold. I feel this in the Holy Ghost right now. I pray somebody really pay attention to this. Behold, pay attention. Looky here. I'm going to do something new. I'm going to take care of you in a new way. I'm going to get you through this storm. I'm going to get you through this pandemic, this recession, everything you're going through. I'm with you. Keep your eyes on me. Can you do that this evening in this Bible study? Amen. It shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? It's prophetic. It shall spring forth. It hasn't happened yet, but it shall. The word shall is prophetic word. It shall. Amen. Maybe today I'm going through some things. Maybe I don't know how tomorrow is going to look. I don't I don't even know when the next time I can have church in this building is with all of you. But it shall spring forth. I know that day's coming. I, I might have a few concerns right now, but tomorrow, praise the name of Jesus, I shall know it. Amen. Every day God's making a new way for me. He said, I will even make a road in the wilderness. That's for you, folks and rivers in the desert. Today, I believe the Lord would say to his people, behold, excuse me, behold, I'm doing a new thing. I I want you to rise up above this. In the name of Jesus, he's asking us to see. He's asking us to respond. He's asking us to purpose our lives and in his church to really act like his bride right now to really be prayerful and seek in his face and not submit to fear, not give in to fear, not to give in to hopelessness, but to trust the Lord, to behold what he is doing, what he has done in the past, but to look to the new thing he's going to do in the future. Amen. God wants us to expect 
a new thing. I know, I know it, folks. It feels overwhelming right now. I was trying to pay bills today, trying to figure out how we're going to do this and how we're going to do that and how's this going to add up and how are we going to get through, Lord? I said that to the Lord many, many times today. I called on him on the different projects um, that I have going on and I was walking through the job sites. I was saying, Lord, what am I going to do? And I felt that still small voice of the Lord. Jesus said it just perfect in John 7, 38, and I felt this scripture come into my spirit. He said, if anyone thirsts, let him come. Let him come to me and drink. You thirsty, you feel dry, you feel scared. He said, come, come on. You need something, come to me, drink. You don't have to stay like this. You don't have to stay in this desperate situation. Come to me, hit your knees, open your Bible. God's going to speak to you now. I'm telling you. God's showing up in this time. Amen. Living water will brim and spill out of the depths of anyone that will reach out right now. Just as the scripture says, folks, I know so much is on the horizon. So much lies ahead and so much uncertainty. But don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged by the coronavirus or the economy or the other detours in the path. Let's take that deep breath like I'm always hounding you about and say, in thee, O Lord, do I place my trust. Let's really do what we say we've been doing all these years. You know, some, we've really been trusting in our ease here in Zion, so to speak. We trusted in that for so many years. But today, our Christianity is challenged. Let's choose to trust the Lord. Let's trust in his forgiveness and his mercy. Let's trust in his provision and power. Let's trust in these things. God says, I'm going to do new things in this wilderness time, in this desert season. I'm going to show you myself as God. I'm on the throne. Here it is. Jeremiah 31, 33. This is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them. I will write it in on their hearts. I will be their God and they shall be my people. That's the beautiful, beautiful thing about it. And I love how Jesus shatters all the confusion that people have. So many people say, well, I got to get right with God first. And the only way is I got to do this, this and this first. No, you can't live for God without God. You can't quit being who you are and become a new creature on your own. This demands transformation. Check this out. Jesus said in John 14, uh, he said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Check out what he says. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my father. Check out John 15, 10. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love do you see this? The new covenant relationship that we have in Jesus Christ is not just a covenant without commandments. The basic difference between the old covenant offered through the Mosaic law and the new covenant offered through Jesus Christ is not that one had commandments and the other one didn't. The key difference is according to Matthew 26, 26 and Hebrews 10, 29, is number one, that the Messiah, Jesus, would shed the blood of the new covenant so that from now on, he is the mediator. We don't go to some priest somewhere and confess our sins and some dude has to bring our sins to God. Now, the Bible says to pray for one another, you know, if we've sinned. But, but check this out. We put all our conscious faith into seeking Jesus Christ alone, okay? He's the one that washes us. But number two, and so important to remember about the covenant, we are promised a new heart. How many want that? A new heart. Lord, created me a clean heart, like David said. I want that new heart, Lord. But also he promises an enabling power of the Holy Ghost. Enabling power, the ability 
to turn away from sin, the ability to say no to the devil. In the Old Covenant, folks didn't have the Holy Ghost power to do what they needed to do to obey God. It wasn't even poured out yet. Deuteronomy 29.4 says, To this day, he said, The Lord has not given you a heart to understand or eyes to see or ears to hear. He's saying, you guys don't have it yet. You can't understand it because you don't have it. It hasn't been given to you yet. So what's new about the new covenant is not that there are no commandments, but that God's promises come true. Jeremiah 31, 33 said, I will put my law in them. I will write it in your heart. Ezekiel 36, 27 said, I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. Do you see that? He said, I'm going to put my spirit in you and cause you. How many are glad for that? I want you to dwell on that momentarily. He wants you to see how powerful this revelation is. He's going to cause you to walk in his statutes. The scripture in Isaiah 43, 19, one of my favorite passages, and I know I've quoted a lot today, but he said, I will do a new thing. This is brand new. This heart transplant, I want one right now in Jesus' name, Lord. God, it's, it encourages me so much. Behold, I will do a new thing. It shall spring forth. I know we're in a time of quarantine. We're, we're ordered to stay home and unless you have a job that allows you to be out. And even then, you're supposed to minimize it. But I thought about this time of quarantine. We can identify with Judah a little bit in the Bible. You see, Judah was in exile during the writing of Isaiah 43, 19. They were stuck. They, they couldn't move. And they, they, were, they were crying. In fact, one scripture says, how can we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? You know, they were just depressed. They felt trapped. They were like, where's God in all this? But God, God wanted them to rem remember what he had done for them in Exodus. He wanted them to remember how he had taken them through so many things. And he was trying to encourage them not to be stuck in the past, but to look forward to the future with expectation of a new thing that he would do. And I always zoned in on the new thing in the past. That's kind of my nature. Uh, I, I like the feel-good part. <laughs> I guess all of us do to a certain extent. But somehow, I miss the fact that this is a wilderness promise. This promise was given, right, in a time of desolation. God told them, I will make a way in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. This is tailor-made promise. He said, I know you guys are parched. I know you guys are wondering what's going to happen. Your, your throat is dry and your, your belly is empty and you're scared. But God told him, I'm going to make a way. And all these years, I always kind of missed the obvi obvious, but the Lord led me to the truth of his word. In that verse, the word desert is a Hebrew word, yeshimon, pronounced Yesh imone, which means waste, wilderness, utterly barren. This represents the total wasteland. There's no hint of prosperity. We don't know what's going to happen next. But right there in the midst of this hopelessness is where God chose to make his promise. Listen, my friends. Right there, right here, I feel the Holy Ghost on my hand. Right here, he's saying to you, sitting on your couch, sitting wherever you are, he's saying to you, you, right? I want you to see, here's a promise for you in this place of barrenness. Behold, I do a new thing. You see that? Will you grab that in Jesus' name and shout hallelujah? See, God has a message to share. He's going to do something new. We're going to have a different kind of revival. Amen. We're going to have a different kind of revival today than we've ever had. We're going to do it. We're going to have a different kind of church for a while. We're having different everything. But we're going to move forward in the new thing that God has given us to do. And when we do come back together, I believe it's going to be better than ever. Because we're going to appreciate the house of the Lord like never before. 
See, God is saying right here, right now in this place, God is going to do a new thing. God's been leading you all along. He's allowed you to endure a yeshimone, utter barrenness. And yeah, you might be a little scared, but it shall be well in the name of Jesus. Amen. Because God's saying, listen, this isn't the end of the story. I made a covenant with you. I'm going to hold your hand. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'm a friend that sticks closer than a brother. He said, my name that you are baptized in, that you pronounce all the time. How many of you love the name of Jesus? Amen. That name is a strong tower that you can run into and be safe. That name. See, that new thing that God wants you to do is trust him like you've never trusted him before. And watch what he will do. He's preordained our path. Our steps are ordered by the Lord. So be encouraged. You and I have no reference point for what we're going through right now. We have no reference point for what will happen next. We don't even know what tomorrow will look at like. Look at what's happened over the last two weeks. Everything's changed so much. But he is with us. And I'm rejoicing for a manifestation of our next best season. Even while we're in the midst of this worst season of our life and scariest time in American history for many, many years, even in your barren place, where nothing's working out, <laughs> rejoice anyhow. As the saying goes, when you're down to nothing, God is up to something. Something new. A new thing. Somebody say it with me, right where you're seated. Behold, I do a new thing. Amen. Say it. Behold. How many of, I want you just to get into agreement with God's voice. Behold. Because I believe rivers of blessing are about to flow through our dry place, folks. So don't be afraid. Don't fear. Trust. I want you to bury yourself in God's word. I want you to get in the book of Acts and start reading the book of Acts. This is a perfect time to think like that. Amen. Check on your neighbor. You know, if, if somebody's older and you got a neighbor, check on your neighbor. Amen. Take a walk in your neighborhood and pray and seek the Lord over your neighborhood. Between now in Sunday, amen, take a minute and, and walk through your neighborhood and pray over your whole neighborhood. Pray over this front range, amen, and just agree with me that God's going to reach the lost in Jesus' name. Let, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I, more now than ever, I need to convey to the people watching, Lord, that we need to turn to you. We've we got to put our hope in you. We've got to dedicate ourselves more now than ever before. We've got to seek your face more now than ever before. We've got to, Lord Jesus, be repentant in any sin that's in our life, any rebellion, any excuses that we've been giving God, that we've been giving you. God, we repent of those things right now. In the name of Jesus, anything that's in our way, wash us, Lord. God, if there's been things that we've allowed in our lives, Lord, I, I know there's been some things I've allowed in my life, Lord. I, God, I, I, I repent of those things, Lord. Any bad attitudes, Lord, any anger, any unforgiveness, Lord, any flesh, anything of my flesh, Lord, I just repent. And I pray in the name of Jesus that you wash us today, that you purge us, and that everyone listening, Lord, would be encouraged, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Before I let you go this evening. I want you to know, and I mean this, that you can private message me, FaceTime me, Google Hangouts, reach out to me, even by cell phone. If you leave a message, I promise I'll get back to you. But I really want to uh, be there as much as I can to encourage you in the Lord. And I'd like to make that connection with you. So if we can serve, let us know. If you need food or you need help, we can also connect you with, we're, we're connected to the Well County Food Bank here, and we're very much a part of that. So God bless you and keep you in Jesus' name. Have a great evening.